For me, it is so vitally important to listen to Jesus, to listen to this man as he talks, to listen to what he has to say to us. And um, we, we have we, we have a speaking faith, but we also have a listening faith. And so I want to work on that lamb speaks metaphor a little bit as we go tonight. And one of the things that um, is important to remember is really the Bible loves to take the lamb and then put him in situations that the lamb doesn't belong in to emphasize a greater point. Like for instance, in Revelation 21, it says that the lamb is the temple in the New Jerusalem. That statement doesn't make sense. Lambs aren't temples. Same chapter, the lamb is the light. Another sen sentence that doesn't make sense. Lambs aren't temples, lambs aren't lights. Until you realize that what the author's doing is laying out a different set of metaphors each time of which he's putting the lamb in the center and then describing the attributes of that lamb metaphorically. So lamb is temple means to us the house of God is wrapped up in the slain lamb, whatever Jesus did at the cross. Lamb is light means not that in some cosmic place called heaven, there's a big sheep up in the air emanating light over everyone. That would be taking it literal, but taking it metaphoric. And we go the light that penetrates darkness issues forth from slain lamb. So whatever the lamb has done becomes the light of the world. It actually takes on full color when you get into those, those chapters in Revelation, because you start to see all the things Jesus said about himself being played out in the Revelation. So I want to jump into Revelation 7, and I want to read for you, beginning in verse 9, um, a passage about the Lamb, because there's a couple of things I want to bring out at the top tonight that I think will help lay us on the road towards understanding the voice of the Lamb. Revelation 7, 9, after these things I looked and behold great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I, I, I wanted to use the context because I want to set the stage. Notice this moment of great praise that's happening in the heavens. After these things, uh, uh, verse 11, or 11, the angel stood around the throne of the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne. And they worshiped God saying, amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders answered saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? Before we answer that question, I just want to say this is one of those chapters that's been used to try and piece together the eschatology of, of the world, the end of the world. And so this is one of those moments where um, we, we have been taught that what we're looking at are people who come out of a tribulation that's in your future, right? So like post-rapture, and then there's a great tribulation, and the saints that died during that great tribulation that's post-rapture, although rapture is not in the book of Revelation. Um, actually, the word rapture is not even in the Bible. That's a news flash for some people. But the, the, the story is not necessarily about people leaving and then what happens on the earth. Instead of looking at this in your future, I want you to look at this the way it would have been looked at when John wrote it, which was a metaphor for the body of Christ at large. Don't just think in terms of out in your future or over in the past or off to the side. So who are these arrayed in white robes? Where do they come from? So think of it in, in the terms of the church at large. Verse 14 then says this, I said to him, sir, you know, he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. How are we made white? To this day. So this is, this is why to me, when you just put these things in the past or you just put these things in the future, you lose the power of the metaphor. And so make it relevant to you. How do you come through any tribulation? Yes, I realize Jesus spoke of the great tribulation that Israel would undergo at AD 70. And I do think that is this. But apply it broadly. How we go through our tribulation is we are made white in the blood of the lamb to this day. That doesn't matter if that's in the past. It doesn't matter if that's in the future. Reality is that's your present. You have been made who you are 
washed in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they're before the throne of God, and they serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will dwell among them. 16. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. Now watch 17. For the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So notice in Revelation chapter 7, the role of the lamb is that he shepherds those whose robes have been washed white in the blood of the lamb. If you and I are those who have had our robes washed white in the blood of the Lamb, or if that's a set of people elsewhere, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is that the Lamb becomes a shepherd and leads them. This is a mixed metaphor. Lambs aren't shepherds. Lambs need shepherds. And yet John takes the Lamb and makes him into a shepherd. And we know that according to the book of John, which you and I have studied together for a while, Jesus takes the metaphor of shepherd and says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. He said they respond to no one else. They only respond to my voice. And so the shepherd is a a shepherd because he speaks. And when the lamb, the sheep, us, hear him, we respond in turn to the voice that we hear. So the lamb of Revelation is not just a bleeding lamb. The lamb of Revelation is also a shepherd and shepherds use their voice.